Hello and welcome to Lord of the Board. My name is Sam and today I'm going to be doing a video on games I am most excited to check out at Gen Con. Now, if you did not know, I am going to be at Gen Con this year and I'm excited about it. I'm really excited. I am going to be helping out at the Ravensburger booth the whole time, but I'm going to have some free time to roam around some of the days. So I'm very excited to check out a couple of games. Right now I've got a list, I've tried to compile a list of 10 games that I am excited to check out at Gen Con. So we're just gonna go through them right here. So I'm gonna start off with the first one on my list, which is Catan Dawn of Humankind. Now, here's the thing. I actually really love Settlers of Catan. I still love this game. I think this looks like a very, very cool version of Catan. If you look at the pictures here, I just think it looks very cool. I like the kind of early, uh, kind of early America type of time period for this game. I think that's very interesting. Um, but you know, this is going to be, uh, obviously designer Klaus Tuber and Benjamin Tuber. Um, this is going to be Catan studio. Now the thing here is, is it says, uh, Catan Dawn of Humankind is a reboot of the settlers of the stone age. Um, with gameplay rooted in the original Catan while featuring new elements, strategies, and adventures to discover. Now, the thing is, is that I actually really wanted Settlers of the Stone Age and was never able to get a copy. So to kind of get a revitalized version is something that I am really excited about. And let's just look at that box cover. I, I just think this game is going to be super fun. It would be good to have a new Catan game because I actually haven't added a Catan game to my list for a very long time. Okay, so what is next? The next game on my list is called Yak. Now this game, it says to build a great and colorful stone tower to guide Yaks in the Himalayas. Um, this is two to four players. This is the de by designer Michael Liu, artist by Chris Quilliams, publisher Pretzel Games. Now this just first of all, let's just look at a couple of pictures. Holy moly, it's so cool. I was just looking at this visually and just absolutely enthralled um, by this game. This box cover is amazing. I just think it looks great. Um, and so this game, uh, it has a couple of things that I'm kind of interested in. It says, in Yak, the village elder has given you and others the task of constructing a great stone tower to guide the merchants and their yaks in the Himalayas. Each turn, a yak pulls its cart into your village. Will you find stones for your tower or food for your reserves? Or will you need to visit the market to find what you need? Over the course of the game, each player builds their own stone tower by acquiring stones from visiting merchants. You start the game with one good of each type and three cards in hand, build, restock, and market. Now three of the four cards being pulled by Yak start on the game board with each player having one cart in front of them and each cart containing three stones and some food. Each cart has a restriction on it uh, because it's Yak is gluten intolerant, like for example, no bread. Um, I think that sounds like really interesting, kind of giving me vibes of Red Cathedral, a little bit different, a little bit of a mixer. So with Yak, I honestly don't really have any idea of how the game operates or works just yet. I'm hoping to kind of check this one out and see if it's something that I want to buy and get. Um, but we'll see, we'll see when I, when I actually get to it. So that is Yak. And now let's go to the next one. Now the next one is one that I heard about because of Tim Chuan, my other half. Um, if you have not followed Tim Chuan's channel, um, you should really check it out. But the only reason why I heard about this game was because of Tim and he's looking forward to it. Uh, so yeah, I'm kind of interested in it now. It says your goal in Ven is to get your teammates to guess a secret code first. 12 word cards will be laid out at random and the code that the clue givers see has three numbers on it from one through 12. Now three large plastic circular overlays in yellow, blue, and pink are laid out on the table with the circles overlapping to create a large Venn diagram. Each clue giver has a hand of cards showing absurdist imagery and they'll take turns placing cards into various sections of the Venn diagram to try and give clues to their teammates about the words indicated by the code. Now I actually did kind of, um, look into it. I think that looks beautiful. That has those three plates right there. Um, but I looked into it and what interested me, um, was, 
Okay, actually, now that I'm looking through these, is this Tim's photography? No, 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 it's not. Dude, it totally is. Is this Tim? <laughs> okay, so um, that makes a lot of sense as to why. Uh, Tim's looking forward to this because this is totally Tim's photography. Um, I can tell because it's excellent photography. Great work, Tim. Uh, this is awesome. Uh, yeah, so, you know, I need like a lighter kind of party game in my collection. I haven't really bought a new one in a while. And so this one kind of is really intriguing me. The fact that it says two to 99 players. Oh, and by the way, um, the publisher is uh, the op. So excited to check it out and get, get a new party game in my collection. Okay, so the next one is by AEG. It's fit to print. Let's check this out. Now, I don't know if I will be even able to get this game, um, but it is something that I am looking forward to checking out if I can there. I don't even know if they're gonna be kind of showing it off there, but I've just been following this game for a while. It's by Peter McPherson. He's a designer that I really, really like, and the artwork is by Ian O'Toole. There's no real, like, uh, actual in-game pictures, but this cover is just absolutely amazing. I think it looks uh, adorable and cool. I love anthrop anthropomorphic animals. is like one of my favorite themes in games, figures, because, you know, root and such. Um, but this game looks very interesting. They say fit to print is a tile laying game for the whole family. Players will simultaneously collect newspaper tiles, stacking them on their desks until they think that they have what they need to make the perfect front page. And then they will lay yell layout and begin to lay out the page by carefully considering the placement of centerpieces, articles, photographs, and advertisements. And when everything is just right, they yell print to be the first off the press and gain their choice of centerpiece for the next round. Now this hectic spatial puzzle features over a hundred unique newspaper tiles, six characters with their own special abilities, as well as three decks of breaking news cards so that each and every time you play, you will be solving a new puzzle. Now, I like this because it is a real time game and I kind of dabble in real time games once in a while. I think real time is such a fun uh, concept, something that I don't really play very often, but something that I really, really enjoy. Pendulum is a great example of a game that I really, really, really enjoyed for its real time. So I'm excited to kind of get a lighter game than Pendulum as a real time game. So who knows, maybe I'll check it out. I hope that I'm able to at least see how it plays over at Gen Con, but you know, I'm not sure if I'll be able to. Okay, so the next one is a new and match set. Now there's really not a lot of pictures on this. I don't think there is any, there's only the cover reveal. Um, but this is the designer Sam Crane, Rob Davio, Adil M. Girusu, and Justin uh, Jacobson. Um, and this is published by Restoration Games, artist Peter Diamond, Brian Patterson. Let's just look at this cover here for a second. Ooh, okay, so that is, it looks awesome. Ever since I heard about this set of Unmatched, I have been absolutely stoked to check it out. So this is one thing that I know I'm going to be picking up from the Restoration Games um, aisle, and I am just so darn excited about it. Always excited to get a new Unmatched set. I want to be covering more Unmatched on this channel here soon, and so maybe this will kind of be the start to that. Um, I just want to be excited about it, you know? And I am definitely excited about this. I was like pretty partial on like the Marvel set and such. I, I just, I'm not super huge Marvel fan, but I got it of course to get it. But this one is like right up my alley. Both these characters, so stoked to check out. So really excited and be looking for content on this set on the channel. All right, so next is going to be Familiar Tales, if I can spell it. Here we go. Okay, so Familiar Tales is a game that me and Kate saw um, the cover of, and I think we actually saw it being played um, at Dice Tower, maybe it was. Um, either way, this game, I believe people like have the game, but I believe that I'll be able to get it at Gen Con. So this is designer Jerry Hawthorne. Um, lot of awesome artists right here working on it. Publisher is going to be Plaid Hat Games. It's got a really great um, average rating on BGG, 
pretty amazing. Um, but this is a cooperative deck building fantasy adventure for one through four players. Um, it's an exciting narrative game in which players take on the rules of wizards familiars entrusted with saving and raising a displaced princess. They must keep her safe from the evil forces that would see her dead, but when it comes to children, it is not enough to merely survive. The familiars know that every choice they make will affect the young one in their care, and if they are victorious and the throne is reclaimed, what kind of woman will sit upon it? So um, it's a, kind of an open world campaign style game. Um, it's got uh, just some a lot of narrative. I think it comes with a book, which is awesome. But let's just check out this artwork and some of these pictures in here. Just some amazing artwork. And I think that, you know, me and Kate were mostly interested into it because of this just absolute gorgeous artwork. I'm not huge on miniatures, but those are really cool looking miniatures. But man, this this art and graphic design is just awesome. So this is one game that I really, really want to pick up while I am at Gen Con. Okay. Ah, looks great, doesn't it? Okay. So next one is going to be kind of funny because, um, <laughs> yeah. So this game's releasing just before uh, Gen Con. So I believe it will be at Gen Con. I'm working on the RA booth and I'm pretty sure I'm running demos of this game. So definitely come and uh, let me teach you how to play this uh, if you're going to Gen Con. But this is by publisher Ravensburger. I know that the designer is Mike Mulvihill, um, original villainous system designed by Prospero Hall. This is a two to four player game. I have an entire strategy guide series on every single villain in this set. If you don't know what villainous is, definitely check out the content on my channel, but essentially it is a card game where you're trying to basically uh, complete your unique goal before the other players and you're going to be collecting these resources. In this case, you're gonna be correct collecting credits and ambition, playing these cards into your sectors and basically manipulating your hand in order to complete a goal. Like Darth Vader has to get Luke Skywalker conflicted, then move Luke Skywalker all the way over to the Emperor's throne room, have Emperor Palpatine there and essentially defeat Luke Skywalker, turn him to the dark side. And meanwhile, you know, General Grievous is just trying to collect 10 lightsabers by defeating Jedi's. So, or sorry, eight lightsabers by defeating Jedi. So, uh, each one of these is completely asymmetric and this game, like I said, I've got videos on this, so definitely check that out. I got a link either in the description or up above right now, but it is really, really gorgeous. The artists on this just did such an incredible job of capturing the Star Wars universe and still kind of giving it its own feeling. All right, so let's see what is next. We're closing in. The next game that I'm very excited about that I don't know much about. Wait, I think I spelled it wrong. Uh, okay, here we go. So the next game is going to be. Oh my gosh, this is not easy to spell. There it is. Okay, Stroganov. Now, um, this game I do not know much about, but I missed it on Kickstarter and I'm very interested in it. So I want to check it out. I think this game is gorgeous. I've seen people have it. They got their Kickstarters in. I never backed it and I'm very sad. Um, but this one kind of has a cool historical theme that I don't know much about. And so I'm very interested to see kind of how it presents and tackles that. Um, but if this is one to four players, cool that it has a solo mode. Um, designer Andreas Steeding, uh, artist Massage Genic. I'm totally butchering that, but this is published by The Game Brewer. Um, now, this says, in the game, strong enough players try to collect the best furs to gain wealth and fame as they move across the vastness that is Siberia. They will journey through Siberia in spring, summer, and autumn before returning home each winter. And after four years, the player who has best utilized their actions and collected the most victory points will win. Now, each year, the players must move eastward across the landscape. They can spend horses if they wish to travel further, and once they have advanced, they may take basic actions such as trading or collecting furs or coins. Now lastly, they may take more advanced actions such as visiting a village, setting up a yurt, taking a czar's wish card, setting up a hunting lodge, or buying a landscape field, and all these actions, combined with exploring and some storytelling along the way, earn players victory points at the end of the game. So it sounds like you're just gonna be doing a ton of different things, earning victory points, and then you just kind of see who wins at the end. I'm sure there's a ton of different little strategies, but just to look at a couple pictures here. First off, the art is just amazing. These little meeples are so cool. 
Oh my word, look at that. It is just gorgeous. This is a game that I'm very sad that I missed out on uh, Kickstarter, but you know, I just don't back very many Kickstarters. So I didn't think I, I really wanted it. And now I'm just really experiencing that, that FOMO, you know, and I really need it. So that is Stroganoff. Let me show you the front cover. Gorgeous, gorgeous looking game. Look at that. Wow. All right, so that is strong enough. We are only have two more left. The next one is going to be Nightfall. Now, the reason why I am so excited about Nightfall is that this is a new Red Raven game. I, if you know my channel, you know that I love Red Raven games. Um, Ryan Laukat and T. Alex Davis kind of did a joint here, um, and for for the design team, and then Ryan Laukat as well as Andrew Bosley worked on the art. So that's actually like Kate's two favorite artists. So man, this is this is just a winner right here. Um, but what I like about this is that says Nightfall is an asymmetrical team game for one to six players. One team will control the knights who must protect the elders and withstand the demons until dawn. And the other team controls the demons who seek to break the seal to the underworld before morning. Morning. <laughs> morning. Uh, during the game, you will choose a unique knight or demon in each with a variety of special powers, such as the flame knight's ability to surround his foes in fire or the bone crusher's power to summon skeletal minions. The cards you play from your hand to perform actions can each be used in different ways, and a set of unique location tiles allows you to create the monastery with a different layout every game. So it sounds like just a really cool like team versus team game, and I just don't really have like any good ones in my collection. And so I am just so curious about this. I want to check it out and look at this artwork right here. I've got the seer knight, the ice knight, the earth knight. You, man, I love medieval knight artwork. So this is just so cool. And I could see this is definitely Ryan Lockett's work right here. Just so whimsical and beautiful. And look at these. I believe these are the demons here. You got the bone crusher, dread mistress, soul stealer. I mean, just look at how, oh my gosh, that cover. Oof. Absolutely gorgeous. So this is definitely a game that I am very much looking forward to checking out. Hopefully I enjoy it and want to actually purchase it. Maybe we can showcase it on the channel here. You know me and my asymmetrical games. Um, I don't really show much stuff on the channel, but this one might have a high chance of getting shown on the channel. And that brings me to my final game and probably the one that I'm most excited to check out out. I don't know. There's no real, there's no real order to these things. I'm just kind of showing, but this game I have been very interested in ever since I first saw it. This is a 4X game called Brazil Imperial. Wow. It actually has a really good rating. Um, this is getting reprinted in English by Portal Games, but it was originally published by Meeple BR, I believe. Um, and then, uh, the designer is Z Mendez. A lot of awesome artists on here in this team. Um, but this game essentially is, like I said, a 4X game. So you're going to be building up. You're going to be exploring new land. You're going to be gathering resources, attacking your foes, trying to collect victory points. Um, you know, all the major things that you want in a 4X game. But what really got me to be very interested in this game is all of the different meeples and the board presence in this game. First of all, look at that. It looks gorgeous. Oh, the cover also, just amazing. Look at that, the boards. There's all these different boards that you can set up to of the game, which I thought was really cool. Um, yeah, just look at those little meeples. Oh man, yes, yes. So I, I think I just saw this game. I know you're just hearing me make sounds over here because this is just like exactly what I want to see in a 4X game. No miniatures, just meeples. I love the hexes that just brings me back to like just, you know, original board game design. It just looks so cool. Um, and I'm just so darn interested in playing it. Um, this one I already got pre-ordered. So this is the one game that I know that I am going to pick up because I already have it in my possession technically. Um, but yeah, I mean, it says while playing, uh, here we go. Uh, in Brazil, Imperial, you need to construct buildings, manage resources, explore the land, create trade, acquire the support of the greatest personalities of the country, and recruit a powerful army to protect your interest against the rival states. If you make the right choices, you can complete missions to progress to a more advanced era, receiving a new interesting option of development and victory points. And in the end, the best monarch receives the title of Brazilian emperor, emperor and constructs a new era of prosperity, freedom, and peace. I think the other reason why I'm so excited about this game is 
that it really reminds me of one of my favorite video games of all time, Age of Empires. And specifically Age of Empires 3, because if I was looking at kind of some of the boards and it looks like there's definitely, there's a couple of different player positions, but France, obviously, you know, Victoria. Um, and then also I saw um, a Dutch leader, I forgot what his name was, but I definitely saw Dutch. Um, and then obviously you got the Brazilian player and I don't know what the last one is, but fact is it, it gives me a lot of vibes of Age of Empires 3 and I loved that game, oh my word. Loved all the Age of Empires games. And so this one, like I said, I already got it on order, so I am so excited to get a hold of this and probably look forward to seeing some sort of content on the channel for this game. But, you know, enough about me, enough about the games that I'm looking forward to. What are you looking forward to? Are there any games that you're looking forward to checking out at Gen Con? If you are going to be there, are you going to come say hi to me as I'm demoing games for Ravensburger over there? I really hope that you do. But I hope that you enjoyed the 10 games that I'm excited to check out, possibly buy, possibly just look into uh, here at Gen Con in 2022. And if you enjoyed this video, please drop a like. And like I said, comment down below, what are some of the games that you are looking forward to? I will see you next time. Let's go ahead and drop the beat.